Hey. Hello, and welcome to another episode here in the madhouse of the Solori no, no guts, guts, no, no glory, glory hour. I'm Janet. I'm Vinny. You guys know that already. Yeah, we're back again another Friday, another week. Yeah, and we're going to say goodbye to February, the last day of the month, the 28th. Um, I would like to say we're going to push it aside and look forward to spring-like weather, but uh, we have to hold off on it. Yeah, we've got a snowstorm coming Sunday, yeah. Monday. And Bernie, Bernie Kearney, my <laughs> dear friend, he says it's going to be the worst one of the season. So um, Bernie's I never hope wrong. you're wrong, Bernie. Bernie's, <laughs> Bernie's never wrong. He's never wrong, no. I, 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 I vacation on, on Bernie's uh, forecast. That's true. That's true. But how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing yeah. good. I'm glad the weekend's here. Okay. My honey's home. Honey's home. Oh, wow, it's a stressful day, but it's done, and it's Friday. I want to give a shout-out really quick to Kerry Galicchio, my hockey buddy. Kerry, I love you. We'll see you later at the Emporium. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, my friend. And um, I just um, I want to introduce my guest, unless you have something else no, you want to say. No, no, I'm definitely. I want, want the people to meet Jay. You know, he's got a lot of people watching in, yeah. along with our people. So we've got a good mix tonight. That's right. So great. without any further ado, further ado, I want to welcome Jay Nova. Castronova. Hey, Jay. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. Yes, it's good to have you, man. Excited. It's I know. Good. It's um, good to have you. I was looking on your Facebook at uh, some throwback pictures of it. We're going to yeah. get into later, you know, but I uh, want to mention uh, you being single dad, right? Yeah, single dad. Two children? Three. Three, Three. children? I know, two boys and a girl. Two boys and Names? a girl. Lexi's my youngest. She'll be 16 April 1st, April Fool's Day. Oh, oh okay. Hey. But not foolish Alex. at all. Yeah. Uh, hi, Lexi. Um, my son, Cameron, 19, school up in Boston. Nice. And my son, Nick, 22, is at home working. All right. Uh, now, which one was just, is, is the Cameron's the one that just went to Boston? Or? He, he's second year. Second, second year? Second year. Because right, yeah. I was reading something about him. He's going to be going to Australia, Australia next. Australia, yeah. that's Down what it is. Under. Yeah. That's wow, fabulous. That's, that's a good great. experience. Yeah. yeah, that's great. He's excited. So, he's excited. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all with you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they spend time with their mom too, but they're with yeah. me. I kept them in the house. You know? It's tough, right? It's, it's, that's cool. Uh, you have so much going on in your life. You're raising three fine children, um, and then to do all the other things you do, which we're going to talk about. It's um, it's a full it's a full menu, right? You're busy. Yeah. Well, it's getting to the point in my life where now I'm trying to transition. Focus a little bit more on me, you know. Right. Well, we were talking earlier about the kids. It, um, the two, you had two of them that was born with uh, skids. skids. My two boys, skids. Um, the doctors said that. Wait, which skids is? If people at home don't know, okay. skids severe combined immunodeficiency, like the movie The Boy in the Bubble, John Travolta. Right. right. Um, they have no immune system. They get IgG, IV from the nurses once a month at the house. And, and that keeps them keeps them going, able to fight. And that's yes, great. they're normal. You would never know. Right, which is good. Now it's yeah. it's, it's it's rare, right? To have it's, one child. To I have, have that. two. It's rare to have one. I have two. So the doctor said oh. I did hit Lotto. Really? Yeah. You know what? You well, you know what? They hit Lotto. They got you as a dad. Yeah, that's, yeah. definitely. That's a and they're blessed thing. to have you know. Yeah. And they're healthy. Can, you know, yeah. even though they have their condition, you know, it's a little different. You know. Right. All right. Is that um, percentage wise in the world? Because I don't really know. Is it um, low percentage to get it? It's really. Wow. My um, first son, Nicholas, he was the first to be treated for skids in that condition from Sloan without getting wow. um, his immune system dropped and all of that, you know, wow. so we went a different route, just bone marrow. Wow, that has to be so scary um, from a parent's point of view. Kids, I think they kind of really don't understand things so much. Or they fluff it off because they're kids. You know that yeah. youthful way of thinking. They don't really right, think, yeah, right. you know. To them, it's nothing, you know, to the parents. like, yeah. oh, my God. But I'm and it. you go through it twice. God bless you, yeah. man. Yeah, I give you a lot of credit. You're strong, as well as they have yeah. really strong We took the chance and had a third yeah. one, and I got my daughter, so it's all good. Nice. Good. Nice. So good. congratulations. Good. good luck yeah, to all so, of them. Yeah. Good luck out there, kids. Yeah. yeah, hey, guys. Now it's time to talk about that. you got a great dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you are. Um, you were born and raised... I'm from Corona, Queens. Well, um, the Lemonized King of Corona, Spaghetti Park in Corona, Queens. Oh, you're right there. The Italian neighborhood, right? Now, there. is that the one that uh, King of Queens has yes. the ice, he gets the ice That's from, right? right? It licks in and falls on the ground. You like that show? I like it. It's a funny show. I love that show. You watch the show, I see the old neighborhood. Yeah, yeah exactly. there you go. See? Yeah, it feels yeah. special when you can yeah. identify, you see, you know, yeah. uh, an old neighborhood on something you watch. But I feel really... I'm surrounded by two Italian, strapping <laughs> Italian men with those blue eyes and the dark hair. It's really funny. It's Italian boys. Who's the lucky one tonight? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, let's mention we're in New York, man. Yeah, a little bit of scenery here. We're Actually, shooting live in New York now. New set in the Madhouse. Tom Ely, thank love. you so yeah, much. I feel like... Um, Put us in New York for tonight. Yes, yeah. Tom Ely. 
Uh, we, we had to pay our own way here, but you know, we're here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Three trains, three subway. Train, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that wouldn't be three trains. One train, three subways. I got it yeah, backwards. I'm not really a city girl, so I don't really. <laughs> no. So, okay. So, you have many titles: <clears throat> drummer, singer, model. We'll get into some of the other stuff as well. When did you? You're a, you're a drummer. When did you start playing drums? And I started playing drums when I was like five years old. Okay. And then by seven years old, I was playing with the 18, the 15, 16, 17, 18 year old guys in my neighborhood. Wait, wow. when you were how old? When I was seven years old. Really? I would Kudos. play the high school That's dances cool. with them. Really? really? My mom and well, my dad used to bring me down. I had to who, get permission. Who got you into the drums? Uh, my, my dad. Was he Christmas? a drummer? Um, he was a drummer. There was a lot of music. My grandfather was a drummer. Okay. Wow. Um, but my dad brought me a drum set and banged away on it. Yeah, and it was funny was. because my dad's lefty. And when I was playing drums, I was playing lefty when I was growing up. And my friends, I started playing with my friends. They were like, you're playing the drums backwards. You're right-handed. We play baseball together. And I was like, oh, so I switched them around. But you were able to play lefty. I was, was able, fine. so. Were you better righty? I am, but I'm sort of ambidextrous. Go back nice. both yeah. ways. It's funny, because you say, my dad bought me a drum set, and I banged away on it. Because my dad bought me a bed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh. I was seven, too. Yeah, there right. you go. <laughs> <laughs> No. Thanks, Dad. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so so from fun. there, I just, you know, kept on going. I wasn't a big kid when I was growing up. When I was like 15, I was still short. I was like 4'11". My sisters are short. And I used to hang out with my brother. In Corona, you hung out in groups of like 30. It wasn't like the neighborhoods now, like mm -hmm. in Long Island. It's different. In Corona, it was like Definitely 30 different. strong. And all ages, you all hung out together mm -hmm. in the park. And when they used to play baseball and football, my brother used to say, get out of here, you're too small. So what I used to do, I used to go home, play my drums, or I used to go make out with the girls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, one or well, the other. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, wow. so I kept at it, you know. So I used to play with the, the older guys, and I got a good reputation. Which is, that's actually really good experience, because um, you figure as long as they were playing from such an, if they were all playing at an earlier age as well, you're sort of playing up. Like when I play sports, if I play hockey, I find that when we played better teams, we always played better. Yeah. You know, when you play a team that's just semi, you know, Eh, you don't. You have nothing to play up to. So right, I'm right. guessing if you played with very accomplished and established, well, for 16 or 17 yeah. years old, it drives you to be a better drummer. Even yeah. it's better experience for you. Good experience being that you young know. kid. You yeah. know, awesome. And what okay. kind of stuff did you do back then? Back then it was Allman Brothers. Yeah. That cool. type of stuff. Yeah. You know, which is all good stuff. Zeppelin, Allman Brothers, all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You like? And then like, now, now was that uh, was it a band or you just? Played with them when they played together. Oh, it was a band. It was your first band? It, well, no, it was just a band that you used to get together and okay. they used to just mm -hmm. play around. What was yeah. your first band? Do you remember? My first band, yeah, actually, I have some, there's some pictures and I have here. Uh, my first band was this band called Sun, S U N N. Okay. And we used to play at the Catholic school, you know. Okay. And I think I was maybe like 13 years old. And then I had a band called Anchor with guys from the Catholic school that I grew up with, you know. Right. That's funny. It's, um, yeah. It's pretty cool playing music when you're young. I think I was my first band. I was probably 17, but it's definitely kind of a cool thing when you're that age, um, 16, 17, because that's cool now. Just this age. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. fun. Now, do you keep in touch with any of those guys from way yes, back? I do. You do. I do. How many of them still play? I um, hope you say all of them, almost. No, they they dabble around. They they're not out there really really playing. There's mm -hmm. a few I run was there, into. Was there one guy that was like really good that should have still been playing? No. There's a lot of there's, guys. There's always that guy, yeah. you know, that's like phenomenal, and he just stopped playing. Yeah, I could go through a lot of names, but <laughs> there's a few yeah. guys that were phenomenal guitarists that just blew me away. I'm like, wow, where are those guys? Or I, I know the way they are, and they're, they're just doing family stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not easy playing music. The business is tough. It's right. not. And then I, I find that many people sort of take a break when they, if and they do raise families. You know, a lot of times it becomes hard to do both. I mean, depending on the relationship or whatever, I guess. But a lot of people I've known stopped for some time. And as they got older, and like you said, your kids are at an age now, too. Um, I know a lot of people that I used to play with back in the early 80s. Now they're all playing again. And, you know, it's a different time. It gets, yeah, when life we, changes. When we talk you know? about the steps that I've taken through the bands, when I was with the Wizard of Oz, the Ozzy tribute band, I was in that band for seven years. And I did take a three-year break and spend it really with the kids and I totally put the sticks Did down. you drum in that band? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, progressing out of Queens, um, I eventually went to Five Towns College. Okay. And what did you think of that college? 
It was, I based, it was based in Seafood then, which it was only part of a school that was there. It was very small, but um, I ran into a lot of talented people there. Mm -hmm. and that's where I ran into some of my friends from Long Island. Became friends with um, my friend Tommy Hendrickson, who's very big in the business right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk a little about him. But um, I met Tommy. We became good friends. And he's like, oh, come out to Port Jeff. I have a band. Come check us out. And I was like, wow, Port Jeff? You want me to drive out there? <laughs> yeah. And I took All a right. ride back then. Yeah, back then, yeah. So I took a ride out one night. And I think it was um, the Rabbit or what was that club back in the days, the Rabbit on in Port Jeff or, or Middle Country Road in Centery? Um, I don't even remember where it was. The White Rabbit. The White Rabbit. Oh, White okay. Rabbit. Okay. So I went to see them at a show there, and I was like, wow, these guys are really good. And, so, that, and what band was that? That was Rough Cut. That was Rough Cut. I knew you were going to say that, right? So okay. I started um, hanging out with the band, doing some roadieing. Became really good friends with Tommy, and I used to actually sleep at the house because it was a far drive. Yeah. And then that progressed into um, they used to do Van Halen show. And what happened was I started playing drums. Well, the drummer, which was Tommy's brother, Eugene, he used to do the singing, and I used to play the drums during the Van Halen set. So that band was like a huge Long Island band. Rough Cut is well yeah, known. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Big, absolutely. Big definitely. band. Um, and from that band, we have a lot of guys that um, John Rogio, who actually plays Rock of Ages on yeah. Broadway. Yes. He's Johnny there. Rogio, right. you know, he plays with um, Unchained. Completely Unchained. Right. And Eugene is actually completely out of chain also. Yes, we, I was actually supposed to play with those guys. Time. They called me up. Eugene called me up. But I was getting carpal tunnel surgery done. So that sort of put me on the back burner. Yeah, that I took some months off there. But um, from Rough Cut, you have Tommy, who um, is with Alice Cooper right now. I've, he I've heard him. And yeah. he's wow. really good. He's yeah, doing he's some really producing good. with Alice. And he's playing guitar with him. He's been with Alice, I think, since 2011. Yeah, and he's done a lot of big things. He was with Doro back in the day. You know, so he's been around. You can look him up on Facebook and um, Google mm -hmm. him. Tommy's got a lot of things going on. Yeah, um, I've seen some of his of videos a while ago. And they have um, a big tour this year, the Motley Crew, Alice. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll be at those shows. Yeah, so the rough cut thing was a big thing. And um, I know I, I think I, I'm the only one that has any type of video of rough cut. Really? really? Don't you love years? that when there's something in the archives? Yeah, I don't think I've seen it? anything. We, we have I some have. video, don't we? We do have some. Do you want to go to, yeah. um, I'm going to let you Yeah, I think we should go to that yeah, so that we could put it aside. That, uh, right. And okay. you'll take us to the, uh, the rough cut video, and uh, we'll check it out right here. Here it comes. There it is. Yeah, we got one for you. Here we go.
Wow. Okay. Hey, that that was great, exciting, man. Huh? That That's was exciting. exciting. You know what? That brings back memories. Cheers. Oh, Remember Cheers? Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Hammerheads. Hammerheads and Sundance. Uh, Sundance. Dog. Yeah, there's so many places. Sparks. Sparks. Yeah, so Vicky. Sparks. Vicky Neely's yelling at some clubs. Yeah, I'm sure that brought back tons of memories for all you guys that are watching. Vicky, yeah, Vicky's well. over here with a big smile those on her face. Times. She yeah, said, you know how many times I've seen you guys? This rock clubs, really, like, great rock clubs, like, back in the 80s. They're far and few between. So we, even as a band trying to get jobs now, it's not, it's not yeah. the same. But you know, that, that was a big uh, club feeling. It's a feel like the important. How old were you back then? Back then, uh, I was 22, 23. But you felt, didn't you feel like a rock star? Because you guys used to pack the house, man. Well, I mean, you were a rock star. I mean, yeah, you know, good looking star. guys. But I mean, it's I mean, all about going on stage and playing to a crowd. You know? yeah. Yeah. Right, Absolutely. exactly, exactly. You know? But I remember going into the places to see you guys, and it was packed. I mean, Pack, shoulder to shoulder, a lot of hair, lot of hair. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hair. all over the place. Yes. And at that time, you were allowed to smoke in the club. Smoke in the club, smoking. that's right. Yeah. Holy you know, crap. It's funny because I said to Vinny, um, we were somewhere recently and it was crowded, and I said, you know, back in the day, when you go to clubs and they're crowded and, like, you have nice stuff on and, like, people bumping into you with their cigarettes and stuff, I'm so glad that there's no, in addition to it just being, like, dirty and yeah. stinky. You come home stinking so, Yeah, bar. but I always had burns in my clothes because yeah. you bump into people and, uh, you know, all that crazy stuff. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. Sure. And we'll come back. Jay's got so much to talk about. The hour flies by. Stay tuned. We'll be Stay right back. Stay tuned. We're coming back. Just what? Yeah, and we're back. Yeah, hey. So <laughs> we got the cute girl this week. <laughs> yeah, we got Vicky. She's awesome. No, she's the cute girl. She's the cute, cute girl. The cute, cute girl. Yeah, that's right. We didn't have a cute person at all, which made it <laughs> so much fun last week. That one spot, it was fun. We had a good time. Yeah. But we have so much more to talk about, Jay. So um, you, you ran and managed, you booked bands for clubs. Um, yes. All right, let's talk about that. So now, 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 were you still playing in a band at this time? Or um, for the break? Or? After the rough cut era, everyone sort of like, we had our little splits, you know, everybody went their own direction, was doing their own thing. I used to go hang out at Lamore East in Queens on Queens Boulevard, a very big club if no one really knows about it. It was a big club. Yeah. Um, capacity was 2,600, but we'd squeeze 3,600. Yeah, right. Wow. You know, back in the day, you could do that. The fire marshals, you know, yeah, they, they weren't around right. as much. Things you know? were well, back, back then, then, back then so it, was, it was owned, and yeah. Yeah. the fire marshals yeah. got taken care That's of. That's right. And and not um, that they didn't come around. They came around like this. That's right. They came around with their hands. Right, right. So I became friendly with Mike and Joe, the owners. And um, they liked me. So I started running the door for them. And then it ran into booking. I started booking. And I started booking all the nationals for them. So I booked everyone from Queens right there, um, Great White, all, all the big wow. bands. Poison. Yeah. Wow. I had them all. Loudness, all those bands. Yeah, Saxon. that's great. Um, so... From there, I started working for a company called First Class Management, which was out in Hop Hog. And I've we heard of them. Yeah. partnered yeah. in with yeah. Lamore East, and we opened Lamore Far East in Comac, which is in the Mayfair Shopping Center. So wow. with both clubs, it was great, because now I had two different clubs to book, and book all these nationals, and all the locals. And how big was the club in Comac? Comac, I think, had... Size of a 800, 900. Yeah, not mm -hmm. as big, but I remember we yeah, but for, the there, island, for the island, for the island, it's yeah. big. Yeah, you know, it's big different club. when you're in yeah. Queens. You know, it's relative. Yeah. There's you know more well, people. Well, in, in Long Island, each lot has maybe five people living there. In Queens, each lot has maybe 300 people exactly. living there. Yeah, so. the yeah. we still had to compete with Sundance back then. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, and Sundance was the rock club, so it was some competition, but. We did have the name Lamore, right. you know, so it was right. Lamore Far East. Exactly. So and Sundance, man, it was a dive. I mean, like, it was a shabby place, you know. It was, it's it was rock a rock and joint. Yeah. You're right. It, it was, was like CBGB's. Yeah. yeah. CBGB's. You know, that place wasn't yeah, the nicest you need, place. You, need, you don't really need much else other than, like, some really good music. Yeah. And uh, I guess back then a lot of hairspray. <laughs> Lots <laughs> it was of hairspray. Good, right? Guys and girls. Really <laughs> Did you ever run into problems, like when you did book a band, if um, somebody didn't, something changed and they couldn't make it? I mean, now you're under pressure to fill in, get another band. Local, stuff bands, like that is... local bands gave you those type of issues. Um, nationals, there was contracts. We really never had, okay, problems. So right. never had problems. The only time we had some problems when the, cl when, um, the club sort of converted to start doing some disco. We had some national disco artists. And we have a few artists that were like bad, 
we had one, I don't want to mention any names, but she locked herself in the bathroom and she was so high we couldn't even get her out. Are you really? kidding? Yeah. It's like and that, somebody national in more of the disco genre? Yeah. Is that really? Yeah. Oh, can a you diva? give us a hint? <laughs> Is it well, a diva? You know, it was a diva, yeah. It was a diva. I'm not, but, I'm not big into disco. I can't, yeah. even, I can't even imagine. Well, well, I don't even know. But um, really, you know, I don't want to put a pressure on someone's name, but right, we had some nice not. like that, not. you know. Right. The rock and roll thing is not You know, not all bad. the fans out there right now are going, they're yeah, guessing well, names for each other. They can inbox me. <laughs> yeah. but, I was um, say, yeah, you can find them on Facebook. As far as rock and roll goes, you know how it is. You're a band, you know, and half the time we're drunk when we're on stage anyway. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, That's when you go on, on stage. <laughs> yeah. We don't overdo it. We know what the level we need yeah. to be to perform, you know. Yeah. And if you're not there, you start drinking on the stage. So. Yeah, exactly. You know, my band played one time at my father's place, and I'll never forget. What place my, did your father have? Yeah, my father's place. <laughs> and I was young, and my parents came to support and everything, and my dad was mortified that I was drinking beer on stage. He was like, he was embarrassed, and it's like nobody, it wasn't on TV, you know, it's like it wasn't, didn't go national. He was mortified, I guess maybe because I was a female, and he just thought it didn't look right. He's old-fashioned Italian. Yeah. I remember my brother so, played so at my bad. father's place also. And it was a, it turned out to be a big snowstorm. I remember we was going there, driving five miles an hour. And I'll never show? forget. Yeah, we he had a packed yeah. crowd. But I'll never forget he wore a, a, this leopard jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Ralph. Yeah, <laughs> There's okay. pictures of that. Back somewhere. then it was okay. So how long did you last there? Um, did you work there at Lemoore? Um, I was at Lemoore's probably it was a three, almost a four year stint there. And while I was there, I, uh, I did join a few bands. I was playing with T.C. Cross, okay. who's yeah, known, yes, Long Island course. girl. Mm -hmm. Played with her for about two years. And then I played with a band we put together called Surrender, which was managed by Lemoore's. And the band actually um, opened up for Queensryche when we had them at the club. But that band was together for like two years. And was that originals, covers? Well, that was originals well, and originals, covers. Like, okay. Yeah. Now, um, when you worked at, now, when you worked at Lemoore's, were you guys like, you walk down the line, say, all right, used to, come on, used to, get in. Oh, you get to choose, pick and choose well, who you're letting in? No, or? I actually worked the door inside. I handled the okay. money, so they, they were already a there. lot of money came through the door, so my bosses only trusted, you know, a few people at the door. You right, know. Yeah. so, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's, so, you know, that's a business you have to make sure. Yeah. You got to trust people. Somebody trust. Right. You, you, gotta gotta get, skim you can't it, trust so. people, you got to get trustworthy people. Yeah. yeah. When we had Queens right there, the door did crazy money. Yeah. 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 Crazy money. It was the highest ticket price we had there, and... We had sold out shows. We had them there for three nights. Wow. And that was what years? That was 80, probably 86, 87, probably. Seems like an eternity. What were tickets going for then? Um, well, Queensryche, I think the ticket was 35, which yeah. was a yeah. lot back yeah, then. Yeah, back then that yeah. was a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, remember, uh, I remember we used to buy tickets for like Van Halen, and the face value was like, Fourteen, yeah, seventeen dollars. Yeah. Go to the Palladium, know. yeah. Concerts there all the twelve dollars. Have more stubs. Yeah. AC, DC. It's funny, Cheap. right? It's crazy, right? And what was the what was the place in Comac? What was the uh... Comac Arena? Yeah, but wasn't there another name for it? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't want to waste time <laughs> on the camera. Thing about that, but that, but was it Comac Arena? Yeah, it was the Comac wow, Arena. Wow, I'm <clears> getting so much. But so when you left there, you decided to what get um get more into your music, focus on your music. Uh, when I left there, it? then um I actually got married. Actually, my wife that, that I married, she was a waitress at the club. Okay. So I wound up getting married. And from being with Rough Cut out in Long Island, I liked it out in Long Island. And um, I wound up buying a house out in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And I'm out here now 26 years. Okay. Where'd you buy? Out I bought out in Sotokit. Sotokit. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I'm nice. still there. Yeah. Um, I nice. bought out there, and then I had my family. And then I started playing again out here. Um, so from after the surrender thing, I played with a friend of mine, John Treller, and um, John Roggio from Rough Cut. We had a band called Extra Extra, and that band was together for a few years. I think that was 1990. Mm -hmm. Did you get, do copies? Or we originals? did copies. Mm -hmm. We had a few originals, but we did some copies. We did actually did a, a, a Frank Sinatra's remake. Yeah, yeah. see, I love, I, love, rock I love taking a song that you don't expect and putting a rock twist on it. Yeah. I think you can do such great things with stuff like that. What song was it? What Frank Sinatra uh, song? I don't do you remember, remember off the top of my head. We yeah, actually have a video at, somewhere. I have a video on it, but we do yeah, have a Sinatra great. song that we that's did. Great. Yeah. Do you yeah. write it all? Have you ever written? Um, no, but now that I'm singing, we'll get into that. I'm starting to write now. So. Great. Wow. We'll get into that. So you, you, you're just moving on, moving on. Moving now. on. So. Yeah, but now, but you said. Then you started to sing, but your throwback Thursday picture yesterday, which we both had curly hair back yeah. then. I had an afro back <laughs> in the day. So did I. So did I. I was throwed up myself. <laughs> exactly. That's what we did. Um, 
But you did sing back then, because that's a picture Actually, of you singing. Because I saw uh, the picture. That like, was a Thursday that? night at the stage door. You know, okay. Rough Cut used to be there yeah, Thursday all nights. The time, right? And what used to happen? We used to come like a, you know, a circus. You know, we used to call guys. They used to call guys up, and one night they were like, "Nova, get up here and sing." I was like, "I can't sing." And I sang a song, you know, I didn't even know if I knew all the words back then, but, you know, <laughs> you just get up there and you do what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. But, and you get through it. Sometimes yeah. you just surprise yourself. Right? And there's a picture I found of it. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Right? I was like, wait a minute, he's dissing me. He told me he never sang until more, more recently. I'm like, yeah. hold on a second. That's an old picture. Uh -huh. You must have maybe told the story and it makes sense. Yeah, really but, um, sense. you know, even when I played the drums, I really don't, didn't sing because more of a power drummer and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm moving a lot, you know. Yeah, so I have I that problem when I play too. Play with a microphone, it's a night get away from me. But anyway, yeah, she's a real power drummer. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dreams. Are uh -huh. Yeah. So we had extra, extra, and then after that, um, I I was telling John, my singer from Extra Extra, I was like, "You sound like Ozzy. We should put an Ozzy band together." And he was like, "Nah." A year goes by, two years go by. I went to his house. I was like, "John, we really need to do this." So we got some guys together, and we started the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz started in 1993, and the band is still together. Really? I, did a, I did a reunion with them last year with the original guys. I was in a band for seven years, and then I took my hiatus. I took off for a few years, you know, spent mm -hmm. time with the family. But John still goes with that band. And we were like the first of the tribute bands. I think there was a Hendrix tribute band and a Stones tribute band back then. There wasn't many. Right. And we were packing the clubs. Yeah. We were playing out there. We were playing everywhere, like Connecticut, Jersey. And I remember one time with my job, I travel a lot. I had to travel out of state, and we had a gig in Connecticut. I remember we used to do a two and a half hour show straight, straight which through. is a lot of work. Yeah. So I couldn't do this show in Connecticut. So John goes, I need to get someone to fill in. And he's like, oh, I'll ask Bobby Rondinelli. So uh, back then, drama. you know, Bobby was a big smoker back then. You know, he used to have, to have an ashtray on his kit, you know. So Bobby <laughs> did the gig for me. I remember when I came back the week later, I seen Bobby in one of the clubs. He goes to me, I don't know how you do two and a half hours. I was dying. He says, when I go on the road, I play for an hour. Yeah. You know, it's two and a half hours straight. You know, yeah. It takes a lot out of you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the guys we had on, yeah, heavy, heavy they, they're all over Long Island, two of the Rock of 45s. They get on and play four hours straight. Nonstop, four hours straight. I mean, then a power drumming, they're playing a lot of dance songs and stuff. But still, to sit there and play for four hours. Yeah. yeah. It's a workout. It's a lot yeah. of work. So yeah. now you still play with that band currently? Uh, no, if he wants me to fill in. But we did a reunion last year. Mm -hmm. We did a reunion show. We did about three or four shows. We played out in Maples. We played, um, oh, Maples. Yeah, that place gets really crowded, Yeah, too. we did a summer show out there. It was really good. Now, we're just going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, you have a slideshow of um, some stuff I want to see, progression of you, yeah, actually, some pictures, right? Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to see that. Everybody wants to see pictures, right, of Jay yeah. from the beginning <laughs> to current. So we're going to take another quick break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Here we are, and we are back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we got caught taking pictures during the break. That's cool. I just want to show everybody this new microphone. I had to get a picture with it. I just love it. That's it's for, new, we, that's for when, we go, when we go on. Uh... So tell me, Jay, your show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the lowdown. So anyway, on, we... on the contrary, Maureen. <laughs> really? So we have, what do you want to show first, the slideshow? Or yeah, let's, let's, show? let's go to the slideshow. Let's show. go to the slideshow. Okay. And, and the slideshow's got the music behind it, so we can't. Right, we narrate can't narrate what it, it is, but when we right? come back, Jay's going to give us an idea of what exactly all the pictures are. Yeah. Annie, yeah. take us to the slideshow.
So we asked him, can I put a band together to do it? And he said, yeah. So Chris picked all of his favorite friends that he ever wanted to play with. So he called up myself to play drums, uh, my friend Rodney James from Earth Eats Dog to play guitar, my friend Joe Costa to play bass, and um, Johnny Wildchild to play guitar also, which I didn't know Johnny back then. I just met him for the F Plus thing. So we put this band together for this particular gig, and we just picked a bunch of copy songs, and we did the show. It was a great show. We had a great time. And then um, we decided to keep the band together for other shows, and whatever reasons it was, you know, the guys didn't feel that Johnny fit in the band, so they wanted to replace Johnny, but no one really didn't want to say anything to Johnny. And me That's being the odd position. guy out, That's yeah, it, that is tough. I, I, I was the one to tell Johnny that we were you know, going to keep this going, but he wasn't fit for the band. And I felt bad, and I'm good friends with Johnny now, which is great. You know, right, I didn't know right. him back then, and that's why I was put in that bad position. But right, Johnny's right. a great guy. He has a great band out right now. Um, you know what? He's out there. People can be great musicians, but sometimes the fit is the just not there. just don't work. Yeah. And, you know, um, and it happens, and I, I have to say, it's probably happened to almost everybody that's ever played in a band. You just get into a band that's just not your fit. The personality's got to meet, too. You know, if the personality... It's everything. Yeah. It's a feeling, and, you know, it doesn't mean anybody's... Hey, let's face it. It's really a relationship. not qualified. Yeah. yeah well, exactly. that band stood together for maybe about six, seven gigs. That's all, you know. And we're, we're trying to get another reunion thing back, back together because it was a great band. You yeah. know, we had a lot of fun. So then we had, um, had an F+, plus, and so out of the F+, plus thing... I was in a hiatus, not doing anything for a while. And then I had a call from my buddy, Rodney. And he's like, Jay, what are you doing? You want to play? You want to put something together? I said, yeah, Rodney, let's put something together. Mm -hmm. So I said, get some guys together and um, find a drummer, and we'll go to the studio, and we'll see what's happening. And Rodney was like, a drummer? No, you play, gonna you're going to play the drums? Yeah. I said, Rodney, I want to sing in this band. I always wanted to sing, and I want to sing in this band. He goes, OK, let's try it. So Rodney got some guys together, went to the studio, and it felt good. He was work. good with it, so I worked with some guys, and um, I put band together with them. What do we got going now there? What, yeah, what is that yeah. now? That's a picture of the big show. That's the big show. That's actually the cult band right there. And actually, um, if you want to mention, if you're throwing pictures up there, uh, are they being seen by people up there? Yep. Yeah. That's Jenny Sunshine, and that's something that um, I'm doing this weekend. Jenny Sunshine, I'm doing a photo shoot with. She's... Um, a tattoo model. Okay. I'm doing a shoot with her on Sunday. Okay. Oh, right. You mentioned that. Okay. Yeah. So, 
I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's another facet of thing of something yeah. you do now. You're all tatted up, obviously. You got some yeah. great stuff, um, two sleeves. You model tattoos, right? Tattoo I'm magazines. I'm getting into that portion of the business, yeah. Okay, and um, that's great. So where can everybody see you? Well, I'm getting stuff together now. You can see yeah. him on the Madhouse TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where you can wow. see him. Wow. Yeah. There's a few magazines out there where I'm in a few shots here and there, but nothing. So I'm, I'm working with other people. So I'm doing a shot with, with Jenny on Sunday. So I'm putting a lot of a portfolio together. That's great. As a male model, it's not as easy. So you, right. you work usually with other female models right. in the business. Now, you know? you get, and those are great shots, when, too. Male when did you get your first tattoo? I actually got my first tattoo when I was like 35. When I was a kid, I never wanted a tattoo. Really? And I never wanted to ride a motorcycle. And I'm a Harley guy. I ride yeah. all the time. I love riding. And I have tattoos <laughs> all right, over right. the place. Well, now, you, you, change, you, you get your it, tattoos... Uh, at various spots or? I have two artists I work with. Um, Popo, who's at um, Tattoo Loose. Tattoo Loose. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of my inner work. Which Tattoo Loose is he at? Yeah, I think he's in Selden these days. He's okay. in okay. Selden's shop. That's what Irish Mike or something? Irish Mike's over there because he's in my tattoo. Irish J? I Irish J. Irish I'm J. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, my friend Angelo at Lucky Cat. And he does my other work. And actually, yeah. I, I just had some work done here from Angelo. And I'm actually doing my photo shoot in Angelo's shop, Lucky Cat, nice. and that's in Mount Sinai. Nice. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I know the name Lucky Cat. Uh, yeah, it's on 25A. 25A, right? yeah. yeah. Right. Wow, well, that's, that's great. great. Anthony like LaFemina, he's a good tattoo artist. Anthony LaFemina, yeah, from Devil's Den Tattoo, yeah. a good friend of ours. He's been on the Shout show. Shout out to Anthony. Yeah, hey, yeah, Anthony. When you hey, talk man. about tats, we've got to mention Anthony. Yeah. 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 He's so guy. that's great. So you're going to do a shoot, like, with motorcycles and... Well, that, that'll be down the line, but I'm doing one Sunday and, um, in the tattoo parlor, the... And Jenny will be doing that shoot together. Great, you great. Know? My friend Neil Calandria, he's a photographer. He's a great guy. He's known out on the island on his um, photography work. And, um, but as we were talking, um, we put um, Novocaine together back in, I guess, 2012. Which and is a great name for a band, by the way. Yeah. But and my, it's really numbing. My name Nova sort of like <laughs> revolved yeah, into a great. lot of these good it's little great. things. But anyway... That band did two or three gigs because everybody in the band was in a lot of different bands and we couldn't get gigs together, so that sort of went away. And then the cult thing, I fell into that. So I put this, got this cult thing going together. My friend Ren, Ray Monty, who was the drummer right now, the band, I just replaced the drummer. Um, Ray actually had an ad on Craigslist that I replied to, and he sort of put the whole thing together. Great. And, now... Um, People who have already seen Jay, I'm sure you guys know, you know, you're up on, you know, where he's going to be and where he's been. But I have not yet seen you play. Vinny and I have not yet. We try mm -hmm. to get out and see everybody. Um, where can we see, where and when? I know in the summer's coming. And I, have a, I have a show coming up at Katie's. I don't have a date yet. It's going to be in Smith April. Town. Katie's in Smithtown. Yeah. I have a date May 31st at Revolution in Amityville. That's mm -hmm. a set date right 110 now. 110 in Montauk Highway for anybody yeah. who's wondering where that is. So, so I have the cult thing going on. So the cult thing has been about a year, a little over a year together. So we do shows here and there. You know, tribute bands, you don't play out as much. Right, because you, you can't band, saturate. What band is that was playing at um, Revolution? Love. That's oh, the cult oh, band. It's called Love. Band. Right, okay. right. Love. And um, I actually started with the Love band. I have a band called Novocaine again. And we're doing um, the serious radio high-octane top of music. We're doing like... Alter Bridge, Hinder, Buck Cherry, okay. Blackstone Cherry. We're doing the stuff that people yeah. hear on Sirius Radio, but none of the other, none of the other bands nobody are really doing right, it. Nobody touches right. that So stuff, that's yeah. where we're at right now. We're actually looking for a guitarist. I still need another guitarist. We have one guitarist. I need one more guitarist. So listen, for people, people that want to find you, just yeah. look into the actually, camera. Actually, if you go them. to my website, jnova.com, it's really easy, J-A-Y-N-O-V-A. You can get it my Facebook, my Twitter. You get my Facebook, my Twitter. You get all my media for my website jnova.com. That's pretty easy. So just go there. Um, inbox me from there. My email is j at jnova also. But right, all my information is, is on there. Yeah. That's pretty easy. But we all looking for guitarists. We all rehearsing. We're trying to get everything together so we cool. can get out on the road. They can, they can also contact us and you know, we can get in touch with you if they can't. Well, our fans still, uh, he's looking well, for a guitar player. And we definitely, this guy um, makes things happen. We so. definitely want to have Jay back. We would love to have you back. Hopefully yeah. next time, you know, playing some music, because I, I would love yeah, that. Yeah, we would love I that. Mean, you a, can't be here and not play music. Yeah, I had some bring you back. musician problems trying to yeah. get out here. But, um, yeah, but that's okay. I know okay. it's rough on a Friday night, you know, rush hour time. But we'll do it. We'll work it out when yeah. it works for everybody. You want to um, show with a little... Cut, I have a cult. I have a little yeah. piece of the cult. Sure. You know? Annie, There's can we um, video. Love? Can we go yeah. to the love video? The love video?
31st at the Revolution on the corner of Route 110 and Montauk Highway in Avenue. Jay will be there with that fan. And so, April uh, Katie's in Smithtown. In April, Not, yeah. We don't have the date yet. We don't yet, have the date yet. Now, it's going to be in April. Time's going really fast. Time's moving. Um, you have something you can talk about a little bit? Yeah, um, um, I'm, I'm into the reality TV side. Um, I did something on True TV about four years ago <clears> with um, a show on there. I was on one of the shows, um, Brian the Fortune Seller. I was on one of the shows there. And it's something I want to get back into. Um, a lot of people told me I sh that's where I should be, you know. So everybody, you know, um, I think I have a picture of an avatar, right? We're, we are avatars. We're, we're characters, right? And a lot of people say I look like my avatar. <laughs> I <laughs> totally told you that. You, know, you look right? like your fit strip and it kills me. It's so funny. Right? That and yeah. Chris Angel. Yeah. Yeah, I get, get that Chris sometimes. Angel? Yeah. yeah. A little okay. bit. So, so um, there's a reality thing happening. So I can't works. talk too much about well, that's it. It's in the works. Yeah. The contracts are right there. Mm -hmm. um, do we I'm, have a Do we have a target date? Um, approximately. We're, we're, we were hoping to start shooting in March, so maybe May. Hopefully, okay. once so the contracts are signed. So we're looking at 2014 to start yeah. shooting and. I have. See um, maybe... I'm working with um, Mark and Denise Weiss from Capstone, and they're a full like entertainment agency, and um, they're going to be. They're my agent and management, so I work with them, so it's all through them. So, okay. you know, You're there's a lot of things. I got my rock, my kitchen well, that I'm working on. I didn't want the show to end before you talked about that. Uh, I got yeah, we something. We talked about that last week. It's on, it could be found on YouTube. Yeah, if right? you go to my website. website, you can go to my YouTube. I, um, I just started doing this on my own, and I hope to go somewhere with it. I just started dabbling. I, I love to cook. I cook. And I'm um, having this rock my kitchen. So it's rock music and a rock guy in the kitchen cooking, right. you know. That's pretty cool. And um, I you cook a lot of cook. Italian he stuff. He likes to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that might, not, might want to <laughs> cook something up a bit. I love it because you got the music in the background. Yeah. You're real. Yeah. I mean, you're down to earth and you're doing something that you love to do. You're good? Yeah. Your stuff's good? Yeah. It's good. I like what I cook. And I'm getting a lot of inboxes on Listen, recipes. Listen, we can't just take your word for it. You <laughs> yeah, know, that's I mean. a, that was a hint. When I come back, I'll bring you a pan of lasagna. Yeah. You've got to bring a pan of something. <laughs> And I heard your lasagna is the, 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 the go-to dish. Yeah. What is your favorite dish to cook? Actually, my lasagna, because my kids love it, you know. So I like my son that's in school in Boston. When he comes home, I have to have lasagna yeah. waiting for him. That's like his that's favorite. Great. And I actually make it for him to take it back, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. He probably gives it to all his, yeah. all his friends. <laughs> actually, I, I had a cousin that my aunt always made this great food, and he went to Stony Brook. He'd go back with all these, like, great chicken cutlets, and he would sell them. Back at, back, back at the dorm at Stony Brook. <laughs> he was I making all to, kinds of money on my aunt's chicken I used to live in cutlets. Louisiana after Hurricane Katrina. And every time I'd come home, my father would make me a big thing of sauce. And I'd take it with me, you know, to feed the guys. And my neighbors would come over for it. We'd make that sauce on Sunday. Yeah, pop sauce. Yeah. Um, well, you, you just have so much going on that I just think it's amazing that you're able to keep up with it all. Yeah, it, it's a yeah. lot. And, you know, having a full-time day job, you know, I'm a network engineer. I do networking. And, See? Um, and, he, and he has a day job, too. I, I mean, oh, my God, job. how do you find the time, really? So it, it's all coming together. But like I said, I'm at the point of my life, you know, my daughter has two more years and she'll be in college, you know, trying to get myself going to things I really wanted to do, you know, but when you have a mm -hmm. family, you don't get to do it. It's and harder. When they everyone says... You know, back in the day, you had to do things when you were young, right? right, right. Now, it's never too late. Listen, never too I late, believe right? you can do things until you die, because well, until, until you die, yeah. you got time. We have, a, we have a sign that hangs over our door. It reads, uh, never, never too, too late, late to, to live, live happily, happily ever, ever after. Yeah. Never too so. late. Listen, I'm still going to play the drums someday. I'm going to mark these words right here. I will be a drummer in a band. It might be like a Ringo Starr kit <laughs> and a real basic kind of drumming, but I will do that someday, I guarantee you, because I'm not dead. And until I am, I'm, I'm going to follow every passion that I have. Yeah. And um, obviously you're doing that. I'm hitting it from every end right now. Yeah, and every you should. End. Why not? And like, you know, the tattoo modeling is not the only thing. I do want to go back. And when I was a kid, I was dabbling in modeling. I want to go back in that part. You know, I wear long sleeves. You don't know what I got underneath, you know. Right, right. right. You know, if I could get into that part of it. Yeah, you, you know. don't got nothing coming up your neck. No. Would you ever do that? No. Yeah, that see, I, I have to tell you, uh, we watch Ink Masters, and the new, the new one's on, and that guy's back from the last season. Yeah. With the well, there's other guys now. Got oh, the other guy's got fires, tattoos. Yeah. Down their cheeks. I mean, it, to each his own, obviously. You know, everybody's got their own thing. Is that one I guy's got his own? I don't find that attractive. Is leopard or yeah. cat? 
and he had implants put in his cheeks, and he's got whiskers. Yeah, and, I mean, look, yeah. whatever, whatever floats your boat and everything. But um, hey, like, he's happy. He's that's happy. That's good. You don't want to destroy good. a face. I think <laughs> it's just like something you don't want to play with. Yeah. But um, but it's it's been great having you, and uh, I want you to just. Again, I want you to reiterate where everybody can find you because I, I know there's people scurrying now. Where is this? I had, I had people inboxing me, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. I can't wait to see the show. Well, well, we'll be at Revolution May 31st, and April will be at Katie's in Smithtown. I'll have a date on that. But tonight I'll be at Revolution for Craven Strange CD release party. Ah, very good. Be there for a party. Craven Strange is a great Long Island band. What kind of stuff? Covers? They're original. original. They have a CD well, release Revolution. party. They yeah. have a lot of um, original yeah. bands. So they're at Revolutions. Tonight, yeah. And we're heading to Patchogue. They're we're going, going to Patchogue. I would be there, the... but i got to go see Craven tonight. And a few of my other friend bands are playing tonight also. So um, We're going to the Emporium. So, yeah, we'll uh, be at the Emporium tonight. We're going to see, see Big Shot tonight. Carrie's come birthday tomorrow. Napa Tandy's in Miller Place. We're going to go see 45 RPM. But more importantly, Jay, I, uh, I really want to thank you. You are definitely a colorful guy. You have so many, you have a passion for life, and you, you know, seek out everything, and I think that's wonderful. You're an inspiration to your kids, I'm sure, um, to follow your lead. Sure. Uh, you know, you She's going to gonna make me cry. <laughs> no, really, because you know what? I, I think it's a great thing, and you're never too old. And never I'm not too saying old. that you're old, but we're the same age, and I feel yeah. like you're never too well, old. Well, you guys so. are old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even you're right around the corner, all so right. it's all good. But, um... Anyway, I just, do you have anything you want to say before well, we close out? Well, I just want to out? tell the people who we have next week. We have um, a theatrical group, my mm -hmm. sister being one of the members. They're going to do some ex excerpts from uh, a play they're about to air in March called The Bikinis for You're Women based on, uh, <laughs> wrong camera, it's live, that's what happens, based on um, the 60s and a musical group, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Bikini, right. The Bikinis. And then the following week, March 14th, I have Tommy Lynn on. He does the One Hot Night, Neil Diamond Show. We're going to do a couple of songs. He and I, I'm going to go from, wow, from Barbra Streisand to Cher. So. Wait, you can <laughs> go from uh, Hostess to Barbra Streisand to Cher. So it's going to be fun. So tune in. And again, Jay Castronova, thank you so much. And You're we welcome. will see you next time with your equipment, Dan. Yes. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Stay tuned, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Ciao.